Hey everybody, this video is for those that are participating in the fast and I just want to encourage you in that. I want to give a little bit of fasting training. Maybe you stumbled across this video and you're not participating in our fast. You don't even know what I'm talking about, but you're interested. What is fasting? I want to give a quick overview of a little, uh, a few details about what fasting is. This booklet um, you can find in the, the link in my profile or down below this video if you want to read the whole booklet. Uh, this booklet is composed of some work that I did, Heart of the City Church, Church of the Highlands. It's a compilation effort, and so uh, credit goes to them for sure. Uh, but we work together on this effort, and um, there's some really great information in here and some, some teaching on um, fasting and prayer in this book. I just want to point out a few things that many of you have already downloaded this book or received it from me. Um, and so I want to just point out a few things for you to encourage you right here if you're joining us in the 21 day challenge in January of 2023 to encourage you to keep going and if you have not yet started a fast it's not too late you can still start one and hopefully this teaching will encourage you uh, that you can do this too so um, if you if you were to read this section on what prayer is um, I just want to encourage you in that that uh, you know, prayer is spending time with God, and and a fast without prayer and seeking God is just a diet. And so this video is primarily about fasting. So you can read the book if you want to hear everything about prayer. But this is what I, this is what we wrote for what is fasting. There are many examples of fasting in the Bible. Fasting is a consistent practice throughout Scripture, and we want to shed light on the beauty of that spiritual discipline. So I want to point out to you that fasting, biblically speaking, is from food. Now it's cool in today's day and age if we add other things like maybe you fast from social media or from TV or from playing video games or uh, I, I don't know any number of things that you might cut out of your life in order to seek God and that's a good thing but I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that fasting is from food. So real quick I want to talk about a few of the reasons why people fasted in the Bible and then I want to give you a few examples of what they fasted from and how. So, number one, they fasted to seek wisdom. The Israelites fasted to hear from God regarding whether or not they should enter into battle. Number two, they fasted when mourning. Daniel and the people fasted after hearing about the deaths of Saul and Jonathan, 1 Samuel uh, 31 and 2 Samuel 1. Three, they fasted for God's protection. Ezra had the people fast together to invoke God to grant safe passage. Number four, they fasted to petition God. Nehemiah fasted while praying for forgiveness of sins and to remind God of the promises that he made and to beg him for return from exile. Number five, they fasted to seek, seek God's favor. All of the Jews fasted in preparation for Esther's courageous attempt to approach the king to save her from the people, uh, to save her people from destruction in Esther 4. Uh, where are we at? Number five. Number six, they fasted for mercy. Daniel fasted and prayed to confess wrongdoing from his people and to petition God for Jerusalem, Daniel 9. Number seven, they fasted to show a repentant heart. In Joel, God commanded the people to turn to him in repentance through fasting, Joel 2. Number eight, they fasted uh, in waiting on God on what God had next. They fasted to hear from God on what he wanted them to do next. And that happens in Acts chapter 9. Uh, Saul, who would become Paul, fasted after meeting uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus, Acts 9. And then also we see another one in Acts chapter 13. They fasted together as a community for God's guidance and call. They, uh, through, pr through fasting and prayer, the people in the church at Antioch knew to set apart Paul and Barnabas for the special work directed by the Holy Spirit, Acts 13. So these are just a few examples of all of the ways, uh, so these are just a few examples of all of the ways that they fasted in the Bible, um, and, and it's not all of them, but it's it's it speaks to the different motivations and the different reasons why you might fast, what you might be fasting for in this time. Okay, and then just a few of the examples, um, different types of fast. Number one would be an absolute fast. Esther had the people fast from all food and water for three days. Number two, a partial fast. Daniel and his friends fasted from all delicacies and ate no vegetables and ate only vegetables and water. Um, and there's another partial fast 
the tribes of Israel fasted, prayed, and offered sacrifices until evening in the midst of battle with the tribe of Benjamin. So this was a fast, um, nothing until evening. And then lastly, uh, you see Moses, uh, you see Jesus went on a 40 day fast in the wilderness. You see Moses uh, fasted, he says, even from water. So this would be a supernatural, miraculous, absolute fast, no water or food. And that is definitely would require a miracle. So any one of these, um, you should definitely, you know, consult your healthcare professional um, along with the Holy Spirit uh, because, you know, God oftentimes asks us to do things that we're maybe not comfortable with, um, but it, it's going to challenge us and stretch us. So uh, I, I didn't have time to go through the whole thing. I want to encourage you to read it on your own, but I did want to encourage you some of the reasons and the reasons vary why people would fast, what they're seeking from God, and also the fasts vary. So anytime I lead people in a fast, and right now joining us, there's about 1,900 people that are doing this together. It's not about us all doing the same exact thing and, and just perfectly uniform, although that is in the Bible, and there are times when communities should do everything together. But in this case, I wanna encourage you to um, seek the Lord. What is something that is stretching you beyond your comfort zone but also something that you're confident you can maintain throughout the 21 days. That's kind of the sweet spot that I like to encourage people pastorally in because I think that's the sweet spot where you're gonna get the most out of the fast, where you're actually gonna be able to fulfill it and not feel let down that you quit early, but also uh, it's challenging for you. There's sacrifice to it. Oftentimes in our church we say a sacrifice is not a sacrifice unless it's a sacrifice. So a fast, you know, to get the most out of it, it, it should cost you something. And lastly, I just want to say again, remember that this is not a diet. Uh, this is not just so you can look good physically or have a six pack at the end of this thing. If you do any physical benefits, that's great. But this is primarily about um, seeking God and growing in our spiritual walk with Him. So let me say a prayer for you. And I'm so proud of you guys for joining in this fast. Lord, I thank you for every person that's joined, that's, that's, that's sacrificing uh, a real sacrifice of their own comfort and their own filling of food and delicacies, whatever it is, in order to seek you. We know that we're not twisting your arm or trying to earn anything from you. We just simply want to create space for you to come and fill. And so we know that you're a good father. We don't need to beg you, but we do want to seek you in faith. And fasting is such a part of that throughout the scripture. And so we together fast you here at the beginning of this year to set aside time to consecrate our year for you and your purposes. We commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.